Shalom Aleichem and good morning. It's Erev Shabbos Kodesh. Pachas Achrei Meis, Hey Tov Shin Pei Beis. And uh, this year is Shmine Achrei what? <laughs> In a regular year you would have the possibility of Shmini Shmoino Shmeino. That if the first day of Pesach was Shabbos, then you'd have three weeks of the same Chitas. Because the first day of Pesach was Shabbos, the last day of Pesach and Chutz Lodas would again be Shabbos. So you would do Shmini eight times. Uh, Mincha of Shabbos HaGadol, Monday and Thursday of the week before Pesach. Shabbos to Mincha the first day of Pesach, Shabbos to Mincha the last day of Pesach, the Monday and Thursday after Pesach, and then finally on Shabbos Shmini itself. This year, because it's a leap year, and Shabbos first day is Pesach's first day, it's Shabbos, so you have Shmini Achrei. Shmini Achrei what? Shmeina Shmini Achrei. Shomin, Shomin, Shomin. Obviously, you want to hope that it has a very positive connotation, and certainly it does. And like the Gemara says about Chalei Meis Achrei Apisirin, Nimshachim, but I don't know, I did never, never mentioned what's the remez of, of Shmini Achrei. But in any case, it's Erev Shabbos Kedesh Pashas Shmini, Achrei Mois. It's exactly seven days since Achrei Shal Pesach. Achrei Shal Pesach is Chavbeis. Today is Chav Ches Nissen. Tomorrow is Chav Tes Nissen. Erev Shabbos Mevorchem and Erev Shchedish Iyor. And uh, we're learning a Maimed. I want to mention that in 1976, Tosh Lamed Vav, which is 46 years ago, pretty scary to say that number, um, in the span of, I guess, eight days, the Rebbe said, for my modem. That year, Pesach started and finished on a Thursday. So the Shabbos after was Chavdalid, was Achrei, the Rebbe said a Maimed. And then there was a Maimed, probably Thursday night, which had to do with the imminent Reish Chodesh. Then there was a Maimed Shabbos. And then there was a long Maimed on, on Sunday night, which was Bezir. The Maimed after that is the Shabbos and Vorchem Sivan. So the way it's going to play out for us is that we're going to be learning a Maimed a week. Although uh, when you get to Shavuos, you immediately run into a backlog because around Shavuos, there's always two or three or even four Maimed from the Rebbe. We'll figure it out in Mirza Hashem. But today we'll learn the Maimed of Achrei. It's a short little Maimed. And as they say in the culture, this is the only Maimed of this sort that they've ever said. It's a Maimed about the Big Day Kayin Godel. It's a Maimed about the Kayin Godel's four garments that he wore when he went into the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippurim. Now I've told this to you many times that Maimodim have a very, very distinct structure and form. And a very high percentage of them, probably 80 or 90 percent, are Maimodim of the Alter Rebbe. Alter Rebbe, over the course of his Nesiyah, said that about 2,000 Maimodim, it says in Ayyem Yem, perhaps more. And in these 2,000 Maimodim, the Alter Rebbe, of course, dresses very, addresses various psukim and asks questions and gives answers. The Tzemach Tzedek probably contributes another 10 or 15 percent of original ideas in Hasidus, maybe even original psukim. But for the most part, I'm not going to say entirely, for the most part, all the Rabbeim say the same Maimodim over and over again. But they say them in their own form with so much change, so much inuyim, that oftentimes you could say about it, Ponim Chadoshim Bois Lakan, Bois Chadoshim Bois Lakan, that even though it's presumably a Maimod of an earlier Rebbe, it's the same Maimod again and again. So our Rebbe said between 15 and 1600 Maimodim. As we like to say, so far, der Weile, in the course of his Nesias. And uh, there are many Maimodim that he said more than once, and some that he said more than twice. And uh, it's a special limb, but you need a lot of time for it. That when you learn a particular Maimod from the Rebbe, you learn all the different versions of that Maimod that are the same, that are based on the same original. But then the Maimodim of the Rebbe, the Rebbe said only once. And this is in this category. This Maimir, Xenus Bad Kodesh, which is four pages and a little bit, uh, and it speaks about the four garments of the Kayin Godel, the Rebbe said at one time. And of course, you look at the footnotes, 
And these are the older footnotes. There's a, a newer version of this Maimed where there are probably better footnotes, but it didn't have a chance to look at that Maimed. You could see how far this Maimed goes. And footnote two is Mitzayin to the Tzemach Tzedek in Eratera. But then he mentions the Kutatera. The Ikid is a Maimed from the Alter Rebbe called Hamitz Nefesh Shelkei and Godel Tov Kufayim Beis. That when this Sefer was printed, that Maimed was not yet in print. But now it is. And then he mentioned the Teres Reish and then a number of other Maimed from the middle Rebbe, the Rebbe Marash, Tzemach Tzedek, and one Maimed from the Rebbe Marash. Which means to use the old classic language, which sounds to some of us heretical, the Rebbe Rashab never said this Maimed and the Friedrich Rebbe never said this Maimed. The Alter Rebbe is the source of it. The Middle Rebbe said it a number of times. The Tzemach Tzedek said it a number of times. The Rebbe Rashab said it once. And the Rebbe is saying it. This is the classic language. The classic language is that there is a Maimed said by a Rebbe, and that is how that Maimed is repeated by the Rebbe and after him. And uh, the, the official jargon is, uh, uh, you know, he said the Maimed from this Rebbe. He said this Maimed. So he has a Maimed from Lukut Ateda. A Rebbe never has as Chassidus. A Rebbe never has his Chassidus for two reasons. First of all, Ein Beis HaMedesh Beloi Chidush, on the level of Limud and Ion, intellectually, scholarly, on a scholastic level, there's always new ideas, there's development, and sometimes there's new approaches. You take the same Maimed and spin it, and it becomes a different Maimed. The Rebbe does that, our Rebbe does that quite often. And then, of course, there's the idea of uh, Oir, Moir. Even if the Rebbe says the same Maimed again and again and again verbatim, like you have in the Hayoim Yoim, that the Rabbeim used to say a Maimir, Lecha de Beze Gimel Shonim Utara Sa'avid, the Rabbeim had a custom that every two or three years they said a particular Maimir to purify the air. And they would often say the Maimir verbatim, word for word, that they said at the time before. And in the Hayoim Yoim, the Rebbe lists a Maimir of the Alter Rebbe that he would repeat over and over again, a Maimir from the Middle Rebbe that they would repeat over and over again, a Maimir from the Rebbe Mitzamar Tzedek. The repeats over again from the Rebbe Marash, it's the Micha uh, from the Rebbe Rashab, it's the Viadaita Moskva. I heard that that one of the Sudas upstairs in the Friedrich of his apartment, the Bachar were pushing. So the Rebbe turned around and he asked, Does uh, anybody know what it says in Ayyem Yem? That each one of the Rabbeim had a Maimed. That they were kaifal echel lebeis a gimbal sharm tasa aver. That they remember which and the Fidik Rebbe gives an example from each Rebbe. One of the maimorim they would repeat for this purpose. And the Rebbe asked, "Do the Bachrim know what those maimorim were?" And I don't remember them off the top of my head. I know from the Tzemach Tzedek. I think it's a shav to maim besasin. You look at the Tera from the middle Rebbe. It's a pesachtigal from Shani Chuv. But I don't remember off the top of my head. So the Rebbe turned around and he asked, "Do the Bachrim know?" Which is the Maimed that each of the Rabbeim, there's only five listed, because the Friedrich Rebbe is writing it, and he goes to Alta Rebbe, the Middle Rebbe, Tzemach Tzarek Rebbe Rashi, and his father, the Rebbe Rashab. And the Bacham didn't know. So the Rebbe said, If they don't know that, why are they pushing? Meaning, if they don't have a access to the Oymak Iyun of Chsidus Chabad, there's no need for them to push. That's how the Rebbe expressed himself. It's was stupid, So there's uh, an idea which is brought from Chassidim and probably from the Rebbeim as well that when the Rebbe says Maimir, the oil could be the same but the Moir is Alam When the Rebbe speaks Chassidim, he's bringing godliness into the world. So even if the ideas are identical, the words are identical, the Alakus is Alam al Alam al It's always new. So there's no such thing by a Rebbe as Chazring a Maimir. But Nevertheless, in the in the jargon, in the lexicon of Hasidus Chabad, uh, the Maimorim re replicate themselves. They replicate and develop from generation to generation. And when a later Rebbe reviews the Maimor from an earlier Rebbe, you would say he's saying this Maimor. Like, you know, if some expert would be mentioning this Maimor, saying this bad case, yeah, this is the this is the dam. It's never and God talk of fine base. You know that kind of language. Anyway, I have Baruch Hashem wasted enough time. This is a Maimed that Rebbe said only once. It's a very nice Maimed. It's a sweet Maimed. It has two parts. The first part studies each one of the four Big Dekei and Gogol that he wore on Yom Kippur separately and explains what they are and explains that they represent Yud Kei Vov Kei, Choch Mabin Amidas Malchus. And they're Mechaper for four different Avedas that correspond, that parallel each one of these four. That's Numero Uno. 
Then the second part of the Maimed is going to say that each one of these four big day kahuna has a property that they all share or that they only produce when they come together as a unit of four. And even though they have a property that they all share, there is an aspect within that property itself which is distinct. In other words, we're going to be discussing the four big day kahuna of the Kippur, the Kegodla Yom Kippur, as their separate begotten, and how they make up a unit. And in making up a unit, they bring out a different idea. Let's learn, okay? So now, if you have my PDF, if you have my sheet, and the new Maime just came out, the Maime from the Teres Menachem was sent over the email now. Um, but I'm using the old Maime, uh, I pre- uh, more than one reason, but I prepared it from the old Maime, from my books, which I bought, and therefore I have a special love for. And um, I said I should bought them when I was younger, right? <laughs> when buying a safe, it was a husband. Um So this is the Maime that I prepared, and you'll follow my notes. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the Pasuk, and then I'm immediately going to go to the second paragraph, the third paragraph, and the fourth paragraph, um, and the fifth paragraph, which is going to discuss each one of the Begadim separately. And then we're going to go back to the beginning of the Maimed and start over again and learn the second point of the Maimed is how the four Begadim make up a unit. So here we go. The Maimed begins, saying as Bat Kedesh Yilbash, the Ken God Lahim Kippur wore a tunic, a shirt, which was made of white linen that was holy, he dressed it. And this shirt uh, was had long sleeves and it closed at the neck and it was tapered to the size of his body and it went until his ankle. It was a, like a long shirt. It was open of white linen. He wore knickers, pants, an undergarment also made from the same kind of white linen. Now when Chumish it says that these knickers went from his thigh, from his pelvis to his knees, there is a footnote here brought as a Maimah from the middle of the Rebbe that makes a suggestion that these knickers went at Eikah Veregel to the heel, Mamash to the bottom of the foot, but the Chumish says it went till the knee. But as you'll see this Maimah develop, the Maimah is going to argue that even though the pant legs did not extend as low as the tunic did, as the Xenus did, but spiritually it goes lower than the Xenus. It's about the next level, the lower world. He wore a girdle, a gartel, a belt of, uh, of white linen. Now a whole year the Kayan Godel's belt was made of shatnes. Right? It was shatnes. And the question is, did the king had yet wear a similar baggage of shatnes or not? And I think that Amman Paskins at the Kayan Hedit also wore a navnet of shatnes. But when the Kayan Godel went to the Holy of Holies in Yemek, he put him the gartel that he wore, the belt that he wore, was white linen, and it was 32 amas, which is probably 50 feet. It was incredibly, incredibly long, and they would wrap it around his body and wrap it around his body multiple times, like a snake wraps around the tree. And he wore a turban that was also white. Um, the turban of the Kayin Godel the whole year was also made from linen, but apparently it was made a little bit differently on Yom Kippurim. The turban was material that was half the length of the avnate. It wasn't 32 amas long, it was 16 amas long. 16 amas, uh, multiply that by by one and two thirds. So it's about a, whatever, 25, 26 feet long. And it was draped around his head again and again and again to create a turban. I don't think it was necessary, but I don't know, to redrape it every time he put it on. In other words, they would drape it and wrap it and wrap it and create a tunic and then they would keep it in that shape. But I'm not sure about that either. And it was 16 amas long. These were the four garments that the Kayan Godel wore when went into the Holy of Holies, which is called Big Day Lavan. The white garments as opposed to the Big Day Zohav, the gold garments of which there were eight, including the Me'il, which had bells that made noise. This was a deeper, quieter kind of service. So the Rebbe goes to the next paragraph. We're going to the next paragraph. Inyan, the idea of each one of these four garments separately. Kimavu, Abidu Shirabi Sayyid Nasir has explained it, the Mamar of the Rabbi. Kvekadush, that Mora Zak and the Altareb. Kvekadush, that Mora M. Tsoy the Mittlereb. Kvekadush, that Mora Samach Tarik and the Rebbe Marash. And again, I want to mention that there is actually a Maimah from the Rebbe, I'm sorry, the Samach Tarik. 
The first would have been the Alter Rebbe, the middle of Tzemach Tzedek. But if you look in footnote 6, he again references the fact that there is one such Maimir from the Rebbe Maharash. As well, the Isa Berama that says in Kabbalah, in a safe called the Vajasya Makipurim, which I don't have. The Arab be loving him Nagi Dali Shem Avai that the four white garments that came God William Kippur correspond to the four letters of Shem Avaya. And in this Maimi that I explained it. I didn't look up the Alter Rebbe, I didn't look up the Middle Rebbe, I didn't look up the Tzamach Tzedek, I didn't look up the Rebbe Marash. But I'm going to venture to say that they have more words here. The Rebbe is very concise, I think. And he goes through each one. Number one, the Mitznefes. The Mitznefes, Kayal Kesed. The Mitznefes, the turban, which was 16 Amis of cloth wrapped around and around and around his head, corresponds to the level of Kesed, the crown. But as you'll see soon, it's Kesed as it comes into Chochmah. Because Kesed by itself could be Klipa. Kesed by itself could be Kachashech HaKeirach, Yitzhani Yitzhamakiv. But in order for the Kesed to be Kedusha, it has to go Lomok HaMaroyas to come down into Chochmah. That's the significance of the tunic. Being on top of his head is the madreg of Kesar. And he continues and he says, It comes to atone for the idea of gaiva, of haughtiness, of hubris, of arrogance, of conceit. I'm going to say, even though the Bible doesn't say it, that gaiva is com- comparable to the Ziyav Avedizara. Because you'll see later that there's one of the four begotten which corresponds to the kapoda for Shvich Domim, another one that corresponds to the kapoda for Gili Aroye. So I'm going to say that Gaiva corresponds to the Takona for Avedazara. And you can explain it in a number of ways. Avedazara is Tefedis of Klipa, right? Gili Aroye says Chesed of Klipa, Shvich Domim is Gvur of Klipa, and Avedazara is Tefedis of Klipa. And Tefedis means a pretty face. As long as it looks good in Klipa, as long as it looks good, it could be behind it, it could be corrupt and corroded and rotten and no good, as long as it looks good. Uh, Klipa is happy. So you can say that Keser of Klipa is the Keser of Levushim, Gaiva, to, show, to look good, which is the name from Avedazar. It's fake. Alternatively, Gaiva is Chutzpah, right? I, I, I'm not on the level that I'm portraying myself. I'm artificially blowing myself up. I'm making myself into more than I am. And uh, that's like Amalek, right? Amalek has no leg to stand on, but he's a chutzpanik, chutzpah beli tage, which corresponds to keset. In other words, I have a, a, an arrogance, a tendency for its condescension, without any justification, without any worthiness, without any righteousness. But I, you know, this is my portrayal. So however you translate the idea of gaiva, it corresponds to keset, because gaiva is holding oneself high, and in klipa it's holding oneself high when it's not deserved, when it's not correct. And like I said, either we'll connect it to the Klip de Levush of Malbushim, um, or we'll connect it to Chutzpah. But in either case, I think it's connected to the idea of Aveda Zara. And the King Godel wearing this Mitznefes atoned for that. The King Godel and Yom Kippur wore this Mitznefes, and he atoned for the idea that Jewish people have in themselves Gaiva, which again, if I'm correct, is connected to even Aveda Zara. You must assume that when you say that on Yom Kippur, the King Godel wears a beggar, that the tones for such a severe Aveda, it means that Bedaka Menadaka, not the actual worship of Eitz Ve'evin, but how it has exists in its highest of sources. Any, anything about being fake, being disingenuous, the Mitznefes is able to atone for. And he says, in Yenagayva, because the idea of arrogance, Negea touches, Upegim, and affects Lamaya Lamaya liberation very, very high levels in one's head, and even even in the crown, which is above one's head. Now let's explain what the idea is. Okay? The idea is that when you talk about a human being and virtue and uh, the opposite of virtue, there's two classes. There's the lower levels of the person and the higher levels of the person. What we would call the Yutke and the Vavke. The Kedusha and the Shechina. On the lower levels of a person, I can do good and I can contaminate my goodness with evil. On the higher levels of the person, I could do good. I cannot contaminate the good in the higher levels of a person, but I can allow those higher levels to go away. In other words, on the lower levels of a human being, 
the level of my mind and my heart, the faculties of the person, I can use them constructively, I can use them destructively. The deeper levels of the human being, the conscience and the sense of righteousness, I can't corrupt them because they're an essence of good. But I can allow them to dissociate from me because I've corrupted me to the extent that they depart. And that is the meaning of these words that negas negeyo pegim lamayla mayla beresh bebechinus hakeser. It touches and it can contaminate levels of the neshama that can't be touched by evil and can't be contaminated by evil. So if they can't be touched by evil and can't be contaminated by evil, why does the Rebbe say they can? And the pshat is that the touching and the contamination is indirect. When a person has gaiva, they don't have access to the truth of their keser and their chokhmah. That's how you would understand it. But it's a niyam pnimi, it's a deeper kind of a sin. It's not a sin of killing or stealing or lying or cheating. It's a sin of inexactitude in the neshama, which touches the highest levels of a neshama, or the ability of the highest levels of a neshama to come down into our body. That's essentially how you understand it. And the Rebbe Ketis, so Mitznefes, the first of the four garments that the Rebbe chooses to address, even though in the Pusik it's brought last, corresponds to Keser, and you'll see in a moment this Keser gives out to has to do with a a chet, an Aved of Gaiva, which I get, I'm saying has to do with Aved Zora, but it's a very high and fine level of this, and therefore it's Negei and Pegim and Keser and Chochma of a person. And he says, Do not feel like I'm contradicting what the Alter Rebbe says, where he explains, when he talks about the Mitznefes, that it says in Halach and in the Gemara Sh'arka Yud Zvav Amma, that it's 16 Amas long. In other words, the half the length of the Avnid. The Avnid is 32. Wrapped around and around his body like a snake. Around the tree. The Mitznefes is wrapped around and around his head. And it's 16 Amas long. And the Alter Rebbe those goes on to say that since base Pamam Yudvav Hulamad Beis. Since twice 16 is 32. So it corresponds to Neged Lamad Beis and as Chochma do with the 32 alleys of Chochma, which is brought in the beginning of the Sefer Yitzirah, Harei, so according to this Alter Rebbe, that the Mitznefes is 16 Amas, and twice 16 is 32, so the Inyan of the Mitznefes is connected to Chochma, not to Keser. So that's his Kash, Harei, Inyan of the Mitznefes, Shuch HaSem, Chetz Lamad Beis, and Chochma, the Mitznefes, which is half of the 32 alleys of Chochma, is B'Mechen, V'Lei B'Keser Kanal, so the Rebbe's Kash is, how could the Ramak say? That mitznefes goes against keser, and they first can't get the gaiva when the Alter Rebbe said it goes against chokhmah. And the teret says, "Ki inyan hamitznefes who?" The concept of this turban, which the Ramak says, "Keser is much a keser nimshach by chokhmah." The way keser comes to chokhmah, why? Because if keser does not come into chokhmah, keser is taka klipa, it's taka gaiva. And keser coming into chokhmah is the mark of coming into a pedimi, so that it should be kedusha, and the negia. And the pegima is gaiva, meaning that there's a difficulty, that there's a problem in the transference of the idea of the misnefes, which is keser coming into chokhma, which shows itself in gaiva. In other words, keser by itself is gaiva. It's empty. It's infinite, but katnas. Empty. For keser to be kedusha, it has to come down into chokhma. And wearing this misnefes is metaken the Nigi and the Pagam, which can happen from Gaiva, which offsets this manifesting Kesa and Techachma, that it should be Kedusha as it's supposed to be. Vezehu, and accordingly, that Masha Mitznefes, Bala Chapar al Gaiva, is Begimati Yutke. That the word Gaiva, which is the, so to speak, the ill that the Mitznefes has to correct, is Begimati 15, and 15 is Chachma and Bina. Because our Mitznefes, Masha Kesa, should be so Mitznefesh represents Keser. But when the Keser is by itself, it's no good. When the Keser comes into Chochmah, moreover, as the Alter Rebbe says, moreover, it doesn't only come into Chochmah, it also comes into Bina, that's healthy. And the Mitznefesh is there to guard against the lack of manifesting of the Keser into Chochmah. So this is explaining what the Mitznefesh is for, the Mitznefesh is the of Keser, and in Kedusha, the Keser goes into Kedusha. What's called in the Maimar of Lamboka Maroi, into Chochma and even into Bino. And it protects against the opposite of health and appropriateness and correctness, which would be that the Kesa is not coming into Chochma Bino, which would be the Nagaif. Next paragraph. Then you wore a girdle, a gartel. 
which is Lachabed and Huri Avei Shabalev. This is a, an atonement for the sin of thinking sins in one's heart. Now think about this. If the Avnei Tisfer Huri Aveira, and it's lower than the Mitznefes, then you would have to say that the Aveira of Gaiva, which we read in the previous paragraph, is even Eidele Danin of Hirid Aveira. It's a clip of Makif, a very Eidele clip. What's Hirid Aveira? Two things. Mind, thought, and a heart feel. The Avnate atones for the sin at the point of transference from mind to heart. Right? The Bitznefes atones for sin at the point of transference from the infinite of the Neshama to the finitude of the Neshama. And the Avnate atones for sin at the point of transference from mind to heart. And again, these are very fine things. The mind is a very fine tool. And the corruption of the mind is really not the corruption of the mind, it's the loss of control over the mind, the loss of, tr- of, of, of bringing down of what the mind is. Let the Rebbe talk. So the Chaim Malka, Malvin, to the place where Avnet was placed with Besamach Lachaz Alev, near the, the chest. People always make a mistake. People wear a gatl at the place where they wear their belt, or where their pants come. But it's not true. The gatl, if you look at the Rebbe, he always wore his gatl here. At the end of his elbows, that's how it's described. The Gemara, at Sile Yadai, where the elbows, if you put your hands down here, which is basically the place of the navel, which is quite a bit above where you wear your belt. And there's a reason for it, because the body is divided into three parts. There's the separation of the head from the body, and the, this is represented by the narrowness of the neck. And there's a separation between what's called the Vari Hanishima, the organs associated with respiration, which is basically the lungs and the heart. And the Ivari Yazan, the organs associated with digestion and metabolization, metabolizing, and so on. And there's actually a kruma, the posig bemuid banash, there's a membrane in the, in the viscera of the person and the animal lahavl, which separates the lung and the heart from the stomach and the kidneys and the intestines and the liver and all the rest. Um, that's called a diaphragm. Or in Lashna Posig, it's called chasara kovid. And the gatl is worn at that point to separate the second part of the person from the third part of the person. So the third part of the person, not just the legs, it's the stomach. The Chabad is the head, the Chagas is the, is the, uh, is the torso, and then he is not only the pelvis, but also the area until the navel, the stomachs. And the Gatl is worn here. So it's representative, the point where the mind and the heart are supposed to converge. Vinyane, the purpose of the Gatl is the Kashara Makish, Matim, to join together the levels of godliness which are indirect with the level of godliness which are manifest and direct. Now, I don't know this for sure, but I'm going to venture to say that over here, Makif means Moich Chabad. Even though before, in the previous paragraph, Makif meant Keser, and Chachman Bino was already Pneumius. At this point, I'm going to say, in some of my modern Maks, you say this, that the Moich are considered the Makif. The mind by itself is Makif, means it doesn't change who we are. The heart defines us. And you're supposed to connect the makif, the objective mind, with the pnimi, with the subjective heart. And if there's a problem with that, that is the chet of it, huri avede shabalev, and the avnate offsets it. The notion of bringing what is indirect into what is direct, is because shabina liba, bina is already considered heart, because it's the intellectual level which is speaking to the heart. from the heart has to radiate to all directions. Because the heart is one of the three masters of the entire body. And which is why that Liba and from the heart it radiates to all sides, all corners. In other words, So a healthy Avneit means a healthy mind, heart, body. It comes from the mind to the heart and from the heart to the body. A not healthy Avneit means a lack of openness from mind to heart and from heart to body. In her avnei, to the notion of the avnei represents two ideas. Number one, to bring down what is in the mind into one's heart. And number two, that what comes into the heart to translate into one's behavior. That's why it's 32 cubits uh, uh, hand breaths long. Cubits, right? Amis. Who the ideas of Shachas HaMakif and Belev to bring down what is indirect, the mind, into the heart, and the heart into the body. And this gartel, which is worn that in, at this point, in what separates 
the respiratory function, from the metabolic function, and its purpose is to actually connect it to is It's not as edel, it's not as high as the bringing down of the crown into the mind, which is what the mitznefes is, which atones for the possibility of gaiva. Even what from the mitznefes comes to chokma remains even even hidden and unseen when it comes down into the mind, because that's what the meaning of the word mitznefes is. Mitznefes lashon safanta. Mashein kein ha'adn as opposed to the gat. So the mitznef is the highest of the four garments. It brings down, let's call, the infinity of the neshama into the focus of the neshama. And if there's a lack of convergence at that point, there's called gaiva, and it needs to be atoned. And the avnate is bringing down not the infinity of the person to the finitude of the person, but bring down the indirect of the person, the mind, into the personalized of the person, which is his heart and his actions. And if there's a deficiency in that area, it's called the chet of irhudi aveda shabalev. Irhudi means thought, lev means heart. It's that combination, the bridging of the gaps, in other words. So if you think about it, the mitznefes and the avnate are atoning for sins that are not actions. They're atoning for sins that are theoretical. They're atoning for sins which are not about something which is bad, but something which is not good. If there's no focus, I get carried away with myself. That's gaiva. If there's no connectivity, then in my brain I could be a big tzaddik and in my life I'm no good. If there isn't anything wrong, there's something which is not right. The latter two are much more basic. Although you have to assume that when you're talking about the Yom Kein Godel and Yom Kippur and the Kedesh HaKadoshim, when it speaks about Shvich Domim and Gile Rois in the next paragraph, it probably doesn't mean actual murder and actual adultery, but it means it on a very Adela level. But nevertheless, it's lower. Next paragraph, number four. The Yenakseinus, with the idea of the shirt, the tunic is. That it atones for the sin of murder. What's the connection between the shirt and murder? So he gives you what seems like only a remis from Yesaf HaTzadik. The Ksein, the Shaykh Laksein, is Pasim, the shirt that the King Godel wore is the parallel of the shirt that Yesaf HaTzadik wore. But Yesaf HaTzadik is multicolored, and this was white. Shatov, Lubudam, which is sunk, immersed in blood. And this shirt is a kapoda for the idea of murder. So what kind of murder did the king God will bring into the Kedish HaKadosh? What kind of murder could it possibly be? Killing a human being is so low and so averse and so outside. There's no place in Yiddishkeit, let alone in the Beis HaMekta. So he explains. In Yenashvich to understand the concept of murder as it relates to the king God will in the the Kedish HaKadosh. So he brings the Pasuk. From Pashas Neach, Shefech, Dam Ha'odam Ba'odam. When you spill the blood of a person, so then it's a terrible thing. But it says the word ba'adam twice. If you spill the blood of a person in a person, the second adam is unnecessary. observes the adam It should simply say If you spill the blood of a person, If you kill a person, you're going to be killed yourself. Why does they shevir adam ba'adam ba'adam dame benafshi? So that he's all explains the meaning of the murder being described in Pashas Neach. Although it's from the Sheva Mitzvah's Brinech and talking to Goyim. And it certainly means literally, thou shalt not murder, including thou shalt not take your own life. But the extra word, Ba'adam, is Meramis to the Shade of Shushvich Hasdamim, the idea of murder as it exists in the most mystical of levels. That in the Shevach Dam Adam the Gedusha, Ba'adam the Blial. The source of murder is that Kedusha is, as I said, Yiddish Oiz Gestalt is arranged in the order of Adam. And when we don't treat the Adam Helion the way it's supposed to be, we're spilling its blood. And we're spilling its blood. It doesn't go to no place. It goes to Adam of Klippa. So Sheifech Dam HaAdam is murder. In the physical sense, means killing a person. The Tate is talking about that also. But the mark of a adam where you're spilling the blood of Kedusha into Klippa. Adam de Yumas. So the Inyam Shrikh Azdamim that's being described here doesn't mean only killing a human being physically. It means taking something from Kedusha as it is in the framework of Adam and giving it to Klippa. That's the Shrikh Azdam that needs to be corrected. So the first two, Mitznefes and Avnit, are Mechaper for Avedis that are not doing something bad, they're preventing us from accessing something good. The Mitznefes is protecting us 
from not being able to access the link between Kesed and Chachma. The Avnet is protecting us from not being able to create the link between Meichen and Midas. So they're protecting us against missing a good, Yudke. Now we're speaking about taking something good and putting it into something bad, but in Atzilus. Taking Kedusha of Atzilus, which is called Adam, and spilling it into Adam of the Liyumas. And therefore the Rebbe continues, therefore when you're talking about Ksenis, it has a dual purpose in its Tikkun. Not only is it atoning, is it correcting, which means it's protecting against the idea of Shefer Dama Adam that something from Kedusha should go to Klippa. There's another idea, which is Chayil Bola Vayakiena. Klippa took something from Kedusha because this is not a sin of omission, of losing contact of Keser, of losing contact of Chabad, but of Kedusha going to Klippa, and you have to take it back. To take back the sparks of holiness that went away to Klippa and bring it back to Kedusha. And he says, When one murders, met metaphysically, mystically, and Kedusha's Chais went to Klippa, and you were wearing this Kesedus as a kapod and as a ticket for this, so you're stopping the flow of Adam Kedusha to Adam the Liumas, but you're also taking back the highest that went from Adam Kedusha to Adam back to the place of Kedusha. Says the Rebbe, Nas Achakach Misha Kosov Ashashal to Adam Adam Ladale. It's not only that Kedusha takes back from Klipa what Klipa took from it, but it actually plays out that then Kedusha is able to dominate Klipa. Shal to Adam by Adam, the Abish that allowed Adam of Kedusha. To dominate Adam of Kedusha, let out late to hurt Adam of Klipa. Shemoitzi gamani tuts the Kedusha shay sham lifnei that you take away from Klipa the life which Klipa is entitled to by itself. In other words, there's a hisap here. Since the Ksenis is mechaper for an oven of shvichas domim, where Kedusha is not just being lost, but that you're going to Klipa. When you take it back from Klipa, you mevada the Klipa as well. So there is actually an advantage, he says, in the tshuva of the Avedah of Tzadik, the Shvich has Dabim sent from Adam to Adam to the Yumaze, and then you're taking it back. You're not only taking back what Kedush is entitled to, but in that process, you're also taking away from Klippe its own life. So this is the difference in the first two and the second two. In the first two, it's a sin of omission. I lost something, which results in Gaiva or Hidr Alev, Hidr Hamachshav Shabalev. The second two, I didn't just lose something, I put something in the wrong place. And when I get it back, there's a ishap. And he concludes, Vaxenis Mechas al Kologufa that Aglaim, the shirt goes till the legs, which is Kineged Havov Midis, as I am Midis, but Kmej Hemla Atom, like Hemla Machas, the Midis of Atsilos, as there can only in Atsilos and not in Bian, Madre Gavod. As I mentioned to you before, the shirt may have extended lower than the knickers, than the pants, but the shirt extends lower but it's only in Atzilus and the knickers even though they don't go into the lower world they're representative of going into the lower that's the mystical idea as the Rebbe says in the footnote which appears at the end of this Maimit last paragraph on page 189 then you have the knickers the pants which is lechas is not ever to cover over the nakedness or overexposure, as the word Erev is interpreted to mean. It comes to a tone for Gil Arois, which is spoken about in Pachas Achnei Meis. And we read it, Minchas Yem HaKippurim. And of course, Gil Arois means what? Disloyalty, right? I'm married to the Abish that have another relationship. That's Gil Arois. So Gil Arois also exists on a spiritual level, not just basic immorality. But Gil Arois is on a spiritual level which is closest to the lowest worlds. Kabbalistically, it's Malchus, which is Nukva, the feminine aspect, Nesis Yisrael. Because Shisham Negea, there it's very, very important to be careful because you're vulnerable to Klippa. Atzilus is like Avram Avinu, has no Shachas to Klippa. Malchus is like Soda. That's why by Soda it says, Vayal Avram Yimisayim Huvi Ishte Avram Besoda Nachas, Avram Besalkis. The Chidish is on Soda. Diloha Vachayin, because Soda, like Malchus of Atzilus, is vulnerable to Klippa because she has a connection to the lower worlds and when she survives Klippa that's a huge accomplishment and the same is true here Gili Arroyes in Atzilus is a mystical thing it's a it's a Indian of disloyalty to Hashem which can be even in the finest and the most edel but it's on the level where disloyalty can actually cascade into real sin as opposed to the first three so just like we spoke about the Ksenis 
the protection is against where Kedusha can actually go to Klippa, Shefer Adam Adam Adam. The same is true here. Malchus is so close to Bria that it's not only that I'm afraid that I'm going to lose a minion of Kedusha, I'm actually afraid that Klippa is going to, Kedusha is literally going to fall into Klippa, what we call Ragla Yedis Mavis or Mois. Shisham Negea, three lines in the bottom one, and here it's very, very important. Shiyah Kedusha Vatad, there should be holiness and purity. Because Sarachliya Sashmira, you have to be particular, careful, because Ragla Yedis. In the higher level, you don't need Shemitah. It's like Leil Shemudim. It's self-guarded. Malchus is the Shemata Besamatis because it's vulnerable. It's open to the lower worlds. V'zehu, this explains why the Ksenis goes until the thighs, to the knees. Here he says something which is not true. Now, in the previous paragraph, the Rebbe said it goes to the bottom of the feet. But philosophically and mystically, it goes to the bottom of the feet, but just for the sake of the body itself, which is Atilos, and not for the sake of what's out of Atilos. That's why the Mittel Rebbe, in footnote 29, calls it Adi Yerechaim. Mashen Kerem as opposed to the Nickers, is Mimas Naim Ad It's exactly the same word, you see? So the language is misleading. It goes till the knees, but its Indian is not only till the bottom of the feet, it's what's lower than the feet. So the, the Ksenis may have extended lower, but it represents only the person. The Mechnesayim may not physically extend as low, but it's about how the person meets the world. Lebar migufo, outside of the body, which is Bechina Samachos, and it interfaces with the world. You know, as they say, where the, where the pedal hits the metal, where the foot hits the road. And you have to be careful. So it's a totem for Gilead Royce. Gilead Royce means disloyalty to Hashem that can actually bring us into a place of real evil. And you have to have a Shemit. And again, you would have to say that this, there's a double... Kapara. Kapara number one is to protect that the Raglaim should go into the Makam Aklipa and it should only be the way it's supposed to be. It shouldn't be it's supposed to be. And that if it went to Makam Shenyeroi, it should retrieve it. And in retrieving it, it's the same idea as we said before. Ashashal to other modern Larale. So the Mitznai, Mitznefes, and the Abdit are dealing with Edel and Yonam of Klipa. And the Ksenes and the Michnasaim are dealing with more basic ideas of Klipa, all as it is in Atsilas. Zeogamkin, which explains that the word Nechsaim is the word Kenes, which is the Esfiras Machas, and Machas, which Kenes is very the Lum Shal Maila. Machas has two ideas how it ends at Silas and how it begins the next world. Ending at Silas is called Yam, the sea, the hidden part of Atsilas. And it's also called Mechnesaim, Kenes, it collects, it holds. The connection between Machas and the next world is called Yabosha, where it goes out. So the Rebbe says the way to ascertain that the idea that the feet, the knickers, go into the lower world is that they should hold everything that, that it has from Kedusha in a good place. And it seems to me that, again, there's two aspects. Kedusha is going to go into Klippa. And because the Mechasayim are going to hold the Kedusha, even when it goes into Klippa, it's going to be spearheaded, it's going to be directed, it's going to be focused on what is good. And if Chas Hashem went to a bad place, it's going to have to stop that flow retrieve from Klippa what it took, and then retrieving from Klippa what it took, it's Mevada the Klippa itself. This is an explanation of our Rebbe, four little paragraphs based on a Maimah from the Rebbe, Marash and the Tzemach Tzedek, and the middle Rebbe built to the Alter Rebbe, that explains the Big Dekuna Kain Godel War on Yehim Kippurim. And it's atoning for quote-unquote sins as exist in Atzilus, Yud Kei Vav Kei. Now let's read one more paragraph on page 190. These four begodim, the mitznefes, the avnet, the ksenes, and the michnesayim are all holy. All four garments, including the michnesayim, they have to be the of kedusha. What is kedusha? In bitl. Bitl means in service of God. The mitznefes is in the service of God, so it brings keser into chokhmah. The Avnes is in the service of God, so it brings Mayachin into Midas. The Ksen is in the service of God, so it protects against Shefer Tama Adam Ba'adam. And the Michnasayim are in the service of God, so it protects against Agdaha Yerdes. And the Rabbi continues and he says, Vinyin Agdusha Mitzvidas Achochma. Kedusha begins from Chochma. Mukutus Reishis Kalasvidas, as the head of all the spheres, the Klaus Kalasvidas includes all of them. And in Teda, it's the Dibur, or Nechev, or Yilach, or Shakelas Kalasvidas, or Dibris. All ten commandments included in the Nechel Yilach, and of course you know the the idea that there's an eleventh commandment which is higher than the ten. This is the concept of a Nechel. 
And al derech said a basar mamor is the maimer of bereishis, which is bereishis nami maimer who, which is maimer kolid the chokhm. There are ten utterances of creation, and then there's bereishis. Some say the bereishis is one of the fir- f- the first of ten. Others say it's the eleventh maimer. The Rebbe is speaking here that kedusha begins on a level which is above the ten spheres, and it brings into all ten spheres bittel. Or to use the language of this maimer, if the mitznefes and the avnet and the ksenis and the mechnesaim is yud kevavke. Kedusha is even higher than the Mitznefes. Even though the Mitznefes is Geser. And Kedusha is Chochma, but the Kedusha Chochma is Bittel, which is deeper than the Yud Kevavke being Keser, uh, Chochma Bina, Moichin Amides, and Mides and Malchus. And he says, In Yen who the idea of the first commandment on Eich, and the same is true of the word Bereishis, Masha Bechem is a Kesed, and Bechal Kesed, and Bechal but in this case, not Kesed, which is Chitain Yisamak, Kacha Shechel Ke'eda, but Kesed, Pnim Yisamak, which is Betel, Shalachain Av, Shanechi, Ube Kesed, although Anechi is in Kesed, which is above Atzilus, Haredi, but Anechi, Nim Deba Seres Adibet, is included in the Ten Commandments. And the idea is, Masha Nim Shach Badibet, Meya Seres Adibet, come down into speech through the Ten Commandments. This comes into words. This comes down into chokma. Nimshech achakach. It then comes in. Bechol adibur and masfiras. No the beautiful, no the masfiras, no the mamores. So you have here words. Same words with different meanings. That's the mitznefes is against keser, but over there meant chitanya is a keser, which has to be protected to go into chokma. Big the kedi shem is also keser. The way it comes into chokma. That's primi is a keser. Bittel. So Big Day Kodesh Haim is really the source of the remedy or the protectiveness against needing to remedy what the foreign yonim that the Big Day Kodesh Haim that can go to the wisdom and can put in Kodesh HaKadoshim is Mechapet. Because over here Chochma means the way Chochma is connected to Pnimi is HaKeser which is way above the level of Chochma which needs to protect the Chitain is HaKeser from going Lamakam Shaniroi or from being lost. Kaiva. So the Rebbe just explained the meaning of each one of the four Big Day Kohonim. And he said, Big Day Kodesh Heim, into each one of these Begadim. There's a Kedusha, the Kedusha comes into Chochmah, which is the Nim Pnimi. From Pnimi is a Keser, as a Shmir. So we explained essentially the Pasuk, right? The four Begadim, and each one is on a different level, focusing godliness, protecting godliness, or correcting godliness. And then we have the cloud, the bittel, which uh, underlies it all. Now we go back to the beginning of the Maimed and we read a new Maimed. Now what we're going to be discussing is not each one of the four big day kuhun as they are separate, but the big day kuhun as they are a unit, as they come together into an achtos. So go back to the first page, first paragraph, second line. The number seven in your text. It says in the Maimorim and in the Gemara and in the Medrash. And it's so interesting that everybody puts the Maimir before the Gemara and the Medrash. Why does it say bad, 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 bad four times? Four times. It should say bad once. So now, in Nigle we say, Mizele made in the Gemara. Has to be the best linen, but the Gemara is explaining the bad, 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 bad to denote Muv Chashab Bad has a chsidis. And the chsidis is much deeper. What is the chsidis? It's Roman numeral 2 in that first paragraph if you're looking at my text. Everything about the, the, the priestly garments is precise. Because also live chais memel chais falei miss anything or add anything the Mizeh move which leads us to the conclusion each one of the priestly garments Yeshli and Yoni had its own idea which is called Ksenes Michnesayim Avnet and Mitznefes the Gam Yeshli Inyan there's another idea Shubit Sir of Kulam Yachad which only is available and all four are together and it's not only the Kedusha it's the Bad which is what the Gemara teaches us from the word the same word is repeated four times bad, 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 bad to say that you have the choicest linen but Chassidus says it's not the choicest linen that the linen has to raise up these four separate in Yonim to a place where they're one that the learning of 
Mufcha Sheba Bad is emerging from the Ide Sid of Kulam Yachad by putting it all four together by saying Bad four times. So the Nigla, the Gemara learns from the four times Bad has to be the best linen. Chsidus learns from the fact that to be the best linen is that there's an aspect of the Big Day Kahuna which they have in common. And this becomes the second half of this Maimir. The first half of this Maimir explained each one of the Big Day Kahuna separately and just added the property of Big Day Kaidish. The second half of this Maimir explained that there's an aspect of the Big Day Kahuna Gdela. Which okay in God of War and Yom Kippur and the Kedush which makes them one. And now you go back to page one hundred and ninety, and the second full paragraph by the number eight. What is it that all the big dikun have in common? And the answer is going to be Amuna. Right? The Mitznefes is Keset the Chachma and Bina. The Avnei is Meichin to Midas. The Ksenis is Midas. The Mechnasayim is Raglaim and Babar Miguf, and the big Kedush protects them. What do they all have in common? Emuna. Emuna is above Kesed and Chokhmah and Bina. It's above Meich and Amidus. It's above Midas. It's above Malchus. It's above Agla Yedis. And it's the same for all and not the same for all. That's what's going to follow. The idea that makes all the four big day kahuna one. Based on the repetition of bad, 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 bad four times to indicate Mufrash Abad. If you, when a Piyah Gemara is based on the Gemara that says bad, that bad, her elum and a karka bad bevat. Linen grows out of the ground solitarily. Upir Shrashi, Shom Rashi explains what does it mean that linen grows out of the ground in solitude? That Kona Yechidi Mikol Garen. You throw a kernel into the ground, one stalk grows. Ve'ein based Kanem Elum Migeza Echad. You're never going to get more than one stalk from one seed, from one root. Other seeds, like chit and vedogan, wheat, or all kinds of other grain, many different stalks can emerge from one. You throw wheat into the ground to plant it, to make it grow. So it's possible from one seedling there should be a number of sprouts, not by linen. Every seed produces only one growth. And the word that it uses is geza. Geza is, uh, it means a tree trunk, it means it's connection to the ground. It's the property about linen, which is singular. The word bad in Hebrew actually means solitude, or solitudedness, or aloneness. But here is it says it's singularity. What does the idea of singularity, which is connected to linen, mean in Aveda Sashem? So he brings the Gemara, Masha Bocha Bakak Vamidan Alachas. The Gemara says, Tayag, Mitzvah, so we're given 613 mitzvahs. And then you had David, then you have Yeshaya, and you have Micha, and then you have Chabakok. Chabakok made all the Tayag mitzvahs into one mitzvah, Shenebe Vetzadi Bemanasa Yechi, all of Yiddishkeit is a Munah. And the nature of the Yechida, of the singularity, of the solitudinessness of Linen is a metaphor for a muna. Shakola Madreg is that all levels, I say the Amunah, is the foundation of a muna. And when it comes to a muna, the avoid of the mitznefes needs a muna. The avoid of the avnate needs a muna. The avoid of the xenus needs a muna. The avoid of the mechasai needs a muna. And the muna is one. Fazehu, and this is why. Mashakol Hadala Begodam, all of these four garments, which is connected, called Adarga, which is four levels. Chochma, which means how Kesa meets Meich. Bina, which means how Meichen meets Midas, and Midas, and Malchus, and how Malchus meets the outside world. Srichem li, Yismi Bad are all made from the same material. Haynekol Adagas, Srichem li, Yismi Yusades, even though there are four different levels of Avoida that are either procuring Kedusha's focus on good, or protecting Kedusha, or healing from Kedusha, from its association with evil, the Amun is constant in all of them. So this is the Pshat. Bad, 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 bad. So this is the other side of the coin. One side of the coin is each one of the big tikkun is a different idea, and the other side of the coin is that all for big are predicated on muna. What's a muna? Simplicity, tmimis, loyalty, no questions. It's a muna. But now it gets complicated. On the one hand, take a muna is such that it's universally the same. But on the other hand, in the muna itself, there's madregis, and here it's going to be upside down that the greatest Amuna is going to be on the lowest level. So we're holding the number 10. Okay, now in these few lines, number 8 and 9, we explored how all the big Dekunas share a property, namely the property of Amuna. And now we're going to develop the Maimah further and identify when Amuna itself there could be levels. There's different kinds of Jews. This is mentioned in Tanya. 
I think in Pedic Yudal, the Bechlolos, Nechalokim, in general, it's Eved Hashem Benishmas Mevai Begufim. Those who serve Hashem with the soul to Hashem with the body. We have the Maimid in, in the Kutateid in Pashas Shmini, Lev Yos Zayar Tzatel Tzachak Bey, he talks about different kinds of Nishamas on the highest levels. Ubeprot is Yeser, more specifically, Nechalokim Be'eser Adag, yes, it's ten categories. Hashem Shavteichem until Hei Tevetzach Hashem Mimecha, which is the Eser Madregis Be'es Robert and Eser Sfidus. And the Eser Sfidus goes to Kandal Deis Hashem Mavai. Which is the Dal Pratsuf of Chokma Bina Midas Makat, which is the Dal Bidi Kahuna, Kanal. There's more than one type of Jew. In general, it's two. More specifically, it's four. More specifically, still, it's ten, etc., etc., etc. And all of them have a Muna. And on the one hand, they all have a Muna in common, on the other hand, they all have a Muna distinctly. Hainu. Shabbi Saul, Yesh, Negam, Kenin, and in the Jewish people, there is an idea of Dal Pratsuf from the four force faces. And Big Dei Kahuna. On the one hand, in each one of these categories, the Yemuna, the Yemuna is a constant. On the other, other hand, each one's Yemuna is different. And as you'll see momentarily, here the biggest Maila is going to be in the Michnasayim, in the Jew who's in the lowest level. And the Rebbe continues on the very bottom of page 190, the Pshat is as follows. Even though we said in the first half of the previous paragraph, Amun is a point, and therefore it's Shalomayla Mitzchal because it doesn't have any subdivisions. A connection to Hashem, which is way beyond reason and sensitivity and feel, is a constant in all Jews. Beholds they still any day mehel muna. You cannot compare the faith. Sheitzel bal seichel that an intellectual has la muna sheitzel bal regesh to the the muna that a person whose center is emotion has. Bal seichel goof among intellectuals themselves ima seichel beifin the nekuda fe seichel on a level of a point. He's an he's an inspired intellectual. Chacham, oy bezrachvus bin or an expansive which has been which is not creative but he's thorough and analytical. When it comes to him, when it people who are emotionally centered, any day melech meishah here it's like noshim shutim compared to people on the lowest levels which is bchinas raglaim. So you have four levels here, right? A muna by an intellectual who's intuitive, chachma. An muna by an intellectual who's creative, uh, who's analytical and thorough, bina. And a muna by an emotional person. A muna by a simple person. And here it's the other way around. Look, mention is by Yehle El said in the previous Maimed Maimed Rach and Pesach, and it's brought in many Maimodim. And again, I I looked it up. If you look in footnote forty six, he's Mitzayin to Tafresh Betes, page two fifteen. And if you, it's a, it's a Maim from the Fidi Kedeba, and the Maram Akemis go back as far as the Mitl Kedeba. But in one of my modern, the Ramuga from the Rebbe, the Rebbe says, Befedish, that it's a vart from the Alter Rebbe, it doesn't bring a mocker. So this vart, which is a classic vart, goes back till the Alter Rebbe. And the vart is, Vaish, Mesh, Honor, Made, Makad, Lubashap, Nyad, Mesh, the humble next to all the people in the face of this earth. And of course, it means, Der, Der, Vedesh, of Der, Der, Manhig, of Ader, Ha'achre, Mesh, the Bainus, all Jewish people, till Mashiach. So the Maimonim say that Meisha Rabbeinu his Paul, Meisha Rabbeinu was most moved, most impressed, most reactive to a moon, a pshuta, the simple plain face of Bahadeid, it was the Mashiach of the generation, which is the hill of Mashiach, Acha Paul Etzle, the simple faith of the simple people, the end of time, influence in Meisha Rabbeinu, Shaya Anav made the game, they should be most humbled. Not the grace, Tanoim and Amiroim, Savuroi, Goinim, Rishoinim, Gdeli Achreinim, but to us, it was the Mashiach, a simple prostayid. Va'af, and even though Moshe is in the highest of levels, and Vaket is in the highest of levels in the Muna itself. Shinyan is on Moshe, who the Moshe Rabbeinu says, "Or a Yemuna." Number one, he provides Yemuna. And number two, Moshe Rabbeinu emes ra. Moshe Rabbeinu emes nus of Moshe Rabbeinu gives Yemuna. And Moshe Rabbeinu's Yemuna is emes. You have to presume that a Moshe Rabbeinu's person Yemuna was in the Madrig of emes. Nevertheless, he looks at us and he says, "I can't believe it." Im Cain. Why should he react so much? To the faith, the daughter, the ikvis, the Mashiach, of the generation of the Mashiach. If our Amuna we got from him, or was developed by him, and in him the Amuna is about the of Emes, and our Amuna is whatever it is. I don't know if you want to call it Emes. Why is he so be his poilos? Now the answer is, our Amuna may be not like his Amuna is, but we're not him. And if you add to the equation, not just our Amuna versus his Amuna, but who we are plus our Amuna. Juxtaposed against who he is and his Amuna, Meshach Nispo. Shenedeim in Yen Amuna, Shetzel Meshach Rabbeinu. Meshach Rabbeinu is a believer, of course he's a believer. Le Amuna Shebechinus Lagayim, the faith of people like us, with the call of the Rega feet, daughter of Iksim Meshach. If you look at Meshach Amuna versus our Amuna, of course Meshach is a bigger mind. 
But if you look at who we are, and who Moshe Rabbeinu is, and then you say, our Amun, and his Amun, and Moshe is Nispal. So, and I forgot where I saw it, but it's not from the Rabbeim, that the Halik Abal Shemtev once said to the Pinchas Koritzer, Pinye, du gloibst, to Tavakum and Atzait, was for Yidn Vimir and Dir, where is Ein Schwer, to Gloib in the Mabish, the Bashanta said Pinchas Koritzer was the old Sadikim, the old Talmud, if you believe there's going to be a time that for Jews like me and like you, it's going to be difficult to believe in God. I had a friend who's now deceased. He's gone more than 20 years and I miss him. His name was Rav Shmuel Levi Yitzhak and Rav Levi Yitzhak Wadowski. He was the Zayda of Machachane. When you walked into his home, right by the entrance there was a picture frame. And the picture frame, there wasn't a picture. There was a quote from the Ruzhner Rebbe who said, that before Mashiach, a moon is going to be like a string which is swinging vigorously in the wind and the wind is, is thrusting it hither and thither from one end of the world to the next and you're going to have to hang on for dear life I said the reason is that you're going to have to hold on to it desperately so Moshe Rabbeinu's impression was not from our Amunah versus his Amunah it's his impression from who we are plus our Amunah versus Kvayachal who he is and his Amunah and by us, push to pros the Yidin with all of our chesreinus. Meish Rabbeinu is humbled. We believe in God. V'lachein, and therefore, number 13, Avshenem et Pesach Yamel Lechaldov is a Meish. A fool believes all means Meish Rabbeinu. Meish Rabbeinu is Chochma Vatzilas. And in his relationship with Hashem, he's called a Pesi. He was very simple. So his Amunah was very pure and perfect. Omnam, however, Hayesh is a Amunah. Kameshi bebechin es Chochma. In Meish Rabbeinu, Taki is a Amunah is how a person whose essence is Chochmah puts the Chochmah aside to be a Pesi and to be a Maimon so as a connection to Chochmah and because as a connection to Chochmah he asks questions and he brings two questions number one Shalachein Shalom HaRayes Meisha questions why did Abish to hurt the Jews by sending him to Pari Abish tells him you know it's a pity the Yavis aren't here because which is Chochmah the Gdusha, there has to be Havana Vasag, has to make sense, even the Muna has to make sense. But Lachainem Rabbi Teda, Shailas Mesha, Law Maria, Isa Teda records Mesha's question. Lema, to say, Shemitzad Bechinas Mesha, the aspect of Mesha Rabbi, which is Chochmah, Tzarech Lishel, it was correct for him to ask. But the fact that he asked is if, I remember after Gimel Tamas, Nundala, the Rabbi Zalmagarari, you read in Zip and Zip, the Rabbi was then an old Chassid. The Iker is that he was Yenik Mayim, Yotzak Mayim al Zikna Chsidim. Rabbi Zalman Garadi saw many great Chsidim. And I remember him saying, In Chsidim, that Megivus does Kashes is Klipa. I'll never forget that. Kashes is Klipa. Remember how he said it. Kashes is Klipa. Questions is Klipa. Finished. Kashes is Klipa. And you have Kashes. You have big Kashes. But Kashes is Klipa. So Rabbi says, Moshe had to ask. That's his Bechina. Now the Rebbe doesn't use the word kasha, he uses the word shayla. And Chas V'Shom to say that Meish Rabbeinu is shayla's klipa. But when it comes to the purity of Amuna, it's not pure. And then he continues. Another case where you see that even though Meish Rabbeinu was the source of Amuna, Pest Yamal Chaldov, Rey Amuna, he wants to understand. She wanted to know what there is about Aduma. These are various midrashim. Right in here, it says uh, that the, the the way I remember the Medish Hashem tells him Lachani Magal this Kachim upon him shall Meisha, and then he tells him Lachani Magal Tam Pada. Here the Rebbe suggests, and there's no Maramokim for it, that Meisha actually asked to be known the Tam Pada, because Mitzvah is Pada Duma Zachuka, which is Lamaila Michochm. And Moshe says, but I need to understand. And who certainly is deeper miyuchal miyakadosh baruch hu? Hashem has to make a special effort. Legalis lay tama mitzvah that Moshe should know the reason for this mitzvah. But the Rebbe says there's a possibility that he didn't even get what he wanted. Ufrat la medrash is medrashas chalukas. Some medrashas say that Hashem told him tampor. Other medrashim say shegam lachem bakoshes Moshe. Moshe asked, and Hashem said, I'm not telling you. Nitsha regam metzleib eifah the chukav la gil Hashem didn't reveal it to him. Because eaten by Meisha Rabbeinu Tzarech Liyah Shulei Bemuna Bezeh, but he asked. So Meisha Rabbeinu's Emuna is incredible. He's the source of Emuna, and he's the source of Emes. But his Emuna and his Emes leaves room to ask a question. We are so far from Meisha Rabbeinu, right? What how ridiculous! Uh, 
Yeah, but we have a Muna, we don't ask. And Moshe is humbled by this. Mitzach, Shemunah, Sh'at Slain, as much as his Amunah was. It was Amunah, Shemunah, Hayyah, Bechach, Menas, Nekshet, Chach, Malachain, therefore, Hayyah, On, of Me'ed, he was very humbled. Lagabe, Maila, Shemunah, Pshutah, to the simple, unquestioning faith of Dor, the Ikvaz, the Mashiach, the generation which is the heel of Mashiach, which is Bechinas Regal, which corresponds to the Mechnes Eibad, where it comes out into the lower worlds. Then there's a Ha'ara over here. I'm not sure if this Ha'ara belongs here, the Ha'ara belongs earlier in the Maimed. And the question is, the uh, Ksenis extends lower than the Mechnesayim, but the Mechnesayim is in Yonam Bya, and the Ksenis is in Yone, only at Silas. So, in the second half of the Maimah, we already have two ideas. Idea number one is that all the Big Day Kahuna are rooted in the same Amuna. And idea number two, even though all big day kuna are written the same emunah, the way the emunah expresses itself is different in each one. And there we conclude, second line, from the bottom of 191 apiza, what is that, they say four times bad. Now, of course, of course, if it said bad only once, you wouldn't have the limud of bad miyuchad. You wouldn't have the idea of seed of kulam yachad. But the fact that it's mentioned four times, I guess you could say as opposed to, let's say, twice, teaches us that even though a moon is the same in all, it's not the same in all. The moon has to be in all four levels. And in each one of these categorizations, it's distinctive based on what that union is. So there's a constant in a moon in all madregas. But the way the moon manifests in different people, it's still a moon, but it's through the prism who that person is. Om, the mafa became at the same time, top of 192. Now, all the four go together. It can't be adding one, it can't be missing one. On the one hand, each baggage, the mitznefes, the avnet, the ksenes, the michnasayim, and their respective avoiders, has a different idea, for a different amuna, but at the same time, they're all unified, pale, it adds something additional to the advantage of this linen or this amuna, which is the union of amuna. Ukadrash, Anaz, like we said earlier, Jadeshes, Kalachad, Mabgad, Mabad, by saying Bad separately, be each one of the four garments. Lamei, the Mshatarachli, is Mufcha, Shabbat, has to be the choicest, Lin, Ulay, Bad, Stam, which means the constant Amun in all of them. And on the other hand, the way this Amun is each one distinctly, by Dehadal, Bagadam, when you have all four garments as they're a unit and as they're distinctive, Nazar, Sakabado, Ushleim, Sakabado, the Kapada happens and it happens, Bishleimus. So we have what the four Bagadam mean. We have that they all share a muna, and uh, we have how the muna radiates through each four, one of them in a slightly different way. Vihine. Ave Yezun outside the Yisrael. The work of correcting Atzilas, that's what this is. Yudke Vavke. It's done by Jews. Unitstam. Ukmebel Shalavishas Habagodam Hoysa the Yisrael. These garments worn by a Jew. O Bisrael Atme Bechin is Kayin, not Stam a Yid, but a Kayin. O Bekayin Atme Kayin Godl. Each Yid has in him an Amadreg of Kayin Godl. And the Kain Godel, as it is in every single Yud, goes into the Kedesh HaGadoshim with all four garments. The Kain Godel, who Talchas HaGadoshim Benefesh, he's the highest level in the Shammes Yisrael. But that's not enough. The Kain Godel in each one of us then goes into the Kedesh HaGadoshim with Talchas HaGadoshim Bechines Malkin, the holiest of places. So the Kain Godel in each one of us puts on the Big Day Kahuna, on Yehim Kippurim, it goes to the Kedushim. It's the convergence of the highest levels of holiness to correct all of these Tikkunim and all of these Vittel and all of this Kedusha and all of this Samuna and so on. For after this man based on Mikdash Kayam, Hoisah Hagbalot was limited to be Achas Bashano, and it had to be Dafke and so on and so forth. On them Achsho, as we say in a Tshuva, Bechinus Achas Bashano. Tell me, you can do that by the Kedushim any time you want. And then I finish it with the words: We saw Leisim Tshuva Miyad Enigol. A good Shabbos. Thank you.